I'm Adam. And I'm Sarah. Today we're interviewing an author and singing sensation, Dino, also known as the Piggy. Hi Dino, what made you want to write children's books in the first place? G'day guys. So I was, I'm a Kiwi and I've been living overseas for quite a few years and I was lucky enough to top the UK children's bestsellers charts and then I flew home to New Zealand to work with a man called Wonky Donkey Man. Do you guys know a book called Wonky Donkey? And when we were touring together, this is about five years ago, he said to me, some of your songs would make great books. And he took one, which was my first book, and he sent it to Scholastic. They're a publisher that make the books. And they said to me, we love it. We think it's going to be a smash hit for Christmas. And then it came out in 2016, and it went to number one for Christmas. And it's a very serious book called Jingle Bells, Rudolph Smells. And so I started because of Wonky Donkey Man, Craig Smith, and... Uh, I've been lucky enough to have maybe, I've got eight books out now and another couple coming out over the next 12 months as well. What was the first song or book that you wrote? How did you feel when it was published? Perfect. So the very first song that I wrote was when I was about your age. Uh, and that was um, a song that I'm too embarrassed to sing. <laughs> and um, I have been writing since. Okay, and I, I love music and I've been playing the guitar and singing since I was your age. And then the first book that I wrote was the one that I just mentioned about um, called Jingle Bells, Rudolph Smells. And uh, it took me about five months to write it. And that's not five months working solidly all the time. It's doing bits each day and then looking at it the next day and going, oh, I could make that bit better, I could make that bit funnier, and I just kept going like that. And then we sent it to the publisher with Craig. How long does it take to create your song or your book? So it takes a different amount of time for different books. Like some of them happen quite quickly. But when I first started, I thought, oh, I can write a book and it'll be done in a few days, you know? And and then as I got into it, I realised, oh, actually, you got to keep trying and keep looking at stuff and every day that you look at it you can find something else that could be better and so I find now that it takes me probably about five or six months but some ideas like this one here knock knock um, I had an idea do you guys like knock knock jokes so I had an idea I wanted to write a book that had knock knock jokes on it and I hadn't seen one like that before like I'm talking a story that has knock knock jokes within the story and I didn't quite know how to do it. So I just knew that I wanted to do it, but I didn't, didn't really know how. And I just kept thinking about it for about 18 months. And then one day I was like, I'm just going to try this. And I started writing something that didn't work. And I tried something the next day and I kept going and I kept trying. And then about seven months after that, so a couple of years on, I finished this book. And I was really proud of it because it was something that I didn't know how to do, but I just knew that I wanted to do it. And I made lots of mistakes and then figured it out. And that became Knock Knock. What do you like about performing songs to children? Uh, watching them laugh and sometimes watching them laugh and sometimes watching the parents laugh as well. And um, it's really fun to have something where the kids get really into it. And like you guys will see with the show, um, we, we have a lot of fun, a lot of laughter, and it's very interactive. So it's pretty amazing to be a part of something that is inspiring people to laugh every day and to have a giggle, you know, and to learn with laughter. Out of all the books or songs that you've written, which one are you most proud of? Oh, that's a brilliant question. So for different reasons, Jingle Bells, Rudolph Smells was, this is, this is my first book! Um... Stinkosaurus um, was the first book where I changed my mindset from being a musician that writes books to being an, an author and I wrote the story Stinkosaurus and then I put music to it and it doesn't sound like much of a difference but in my head it was like oh. and so I, I was really proud of that one because I was able to do it a different way around um, and this one here Ron the Royal Guard was along with Stinkosaurus, they were the first to be released into the UK. And so I was, was pretty excited about that and proud of that one as well. So 
for different reasons, knock knock is um, because I didn't know how to do it and I had no idea and then I got to do it, you know. So for different reasons, I'm proud of different books, you know. And there's another book that's not mine as well that I think is super awesome. And that is um, uh, Wonky Donkey Man, Craig Smith. He, um, he actually, hang on, I'm just going to tell my wife. Hello, gorgeous. I'm just being interviewed by kids. Oh, <laughs> Love you. Bye. Everyone say bye. Bye. <laughs> there you are. And, um, and uh, yeah, so he was working on that one and he didn't quite know what to do with the song. And so we were having a bit of banter about that and a bit of a chat about that. And that was kind of cool as well. Are you working on anything at the moment? Uh, yes. So I've finished working on the third in the series for Ninor. So that's coming out in April. And that is called, it's a secret, so you're not allowed to tell anyone, okay? It's called Ninor Goes Bananas. Okay, and it's got monkeys in it. Um, and I'm also working on, I reckon, about 50 other stories. Because what I do is anytime I have an idea, it doesn't matter how good or how uh, small the idea is or if I think it's not going to be that good or whatever. Anytime I have an idea, I open a Google Doc and I put down whatever the idea is. So it might be a book about a dragon or a, um, it might be like the name Stinkosaurus. And then I'll put in the document any thoughts I have on that or if I start writing it. So I've got, I reckon I've got about 100 of those on the go. Um, and anytime I'm stuck for an idea, I just look through that list. If I'm working on something and, and I feel like my brain's stopping, I just look down the list and go, oh, hey, what was that? And look through that and carry on working with something like that. Yeah, and it's a fun way to do it. So any idea is a good idea. Put it down and go for it. And it doesn't matter how many mistakes you make with it because all that stuff can be fixed later. Did you like writing at school? Uh, yeah, I did. I did. And do you know, it's funny because I wasn't the strongest and I'm still not like we're about to do a creative writing workshop with some of the seniors and I won't be the best writer in that room you know um but the the trick is do your best put the idea down and anything else can be fixed so I make lots and lots of mistakes when I do these and then the next day I might find those mistakes and sometimes I ask people for help uh what do you think and they might pick up on mistakes and then it goes, it goes through a process with me like that and I get my wife who just called to help and um, also uh, then I, I test it out on friends and it can be any, like one of my friends is a builder and he comes up with the best ideas and he's based in England and, and then it goes to an editor and then they have their thoughts as well. So any idea can be a good idea and you don't need to technically know how all, all the answers as you're doing it. It's just about getting the idea down. Do you have any tips for kids who want to be story or songwriters? Uh, yes, absolutely. Just do it and don't worry about making mistakes and get your ideas down, just what we were talking about. That's the secret. And then if you've got ideas, then you're a brilliant songwriter or a brilliant author because it's just a case of getting those ideas down and keeping going until it ends up being a finished product like one of these. We heard you got to interview Ed Sheeran and just. Didn't it, Tim? Like, how did that come? Yeah, so so I was living in the UK, and um, I was lucky enough to be one of five people in the whole United Kingdom that got to spend twenty minutes in a room by myself with Justin Timberlake, and it was a tiny. It was like he was there, like you, Zara. You was like Justin Timberlake. Can you sing like him? <laughs> and so, and I was here, and we got. I got to jam with Justin to sing with him and and to have a laugh with him. And I got to do that because I was on the radio. And so I was invited to London and he had these big people with him and they were like, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that and that. And when I got to talk to him, he was awesome and he was really fun. And he let me, he let me do lots of fun stuff. And so that was pretty amazing. And Ed Sheeran, I was lucky enough, um, he came to my work and it was in uh, Manchester and so we were in a tiny room smaller than just this bit of your library. And he came in with this little guitar 
and he sang to us for an hour all of his songs. And there was myself and about eight other people in the room. And it was incredible. Do you guys like music? He is awesome musician and incredible guitarist. And then at the end, I got chatting to him. And I said to him, hey, man, I love your guitar. And he said, here, have a go. And I got to play on Ed Sheeran's guitar and sing a song with him. It was awesome. It was super fun. Thanks for asking. Thanks for answering our questions, Dino. It's been really fun talking with you. High five. You guys are awesome at interviewing. Thank you very much. It was as rare and raw that caused such a fuss because Stan was the very first Stankosaurus. Put your hands up like a So he walked into the jungle going stop, stop, stop. Eating up the ripe bananas with a chomp, chomp, chomp They caused a rumble from his tongue Then a sound from his bum It was a noise so loud Then out came a whippy cloud So you're not allowed to talk, are you, Ron? No, that's right. Ron, <laughs> <laughs> right, just talk. Hey, do you have a favourite dance you love to do, Ron? Oh, yes. I love to floss. <laughs> Who here knows how to floss? Everyone stand up and show Ron how to floss. Go. Okay, Ron. So, of course, next you know how to do that, Ron. You're a bit of a floss. Here we go, everyone play the drums, here we go. I'm busting, 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 I'm busting, 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 I'm busting, busting, hit the way! Wow, here we go, Ron. Oh, hey, Ron, did you hear the grown-ups over here? They were saying, floss faster, Ron, floss faster. Oh, uh, who would like to see Ron floss faster than anyone in the world ever floss before? Everyone play the royal drums really fast, good. Ron is the royal guard at the palace every day, looking after royals while corgis run and play. Before he starts his shift, he enjoys a cup of tea, and on some British sunny days, he can guzzle almost three. Have a drink, Ron. Day, something felt wrong, and with some urgency, Rob cried, Someone help me please, we have an emergency. He marched from side to side, and as the funny feeling grew, Rob hollered to the Queen, Mom, I really need the loo. Everybody play the royal drums, and Rob, you sing, go. I am Rob the royal guard, in my royal decree. I really need the party now. Crisscross your legs like that, Ron. Ron crisscrossed his legs and bobbled up and down. Then he had a great idea as he jiggled round and round. If there was someone else who could put on his outfit, then he would sing to the lavatory for just a little bit. Ron, I'm just looking at the air. It's a flying donkey. While well, everyone's looking at the flying donkey, we'll get you changed and no one will notice that you're a teacher. That volunteered for having the courage to get up here. I think what we're going to do, I hereby appoint you 
principal of the whole school for the next seven minutes. Everyone say hi, Principal Rogers. Hi.